Welcome to today's training on Open Contracting Portal. My name is Charlene Migwe and I will be taking you through today's training. Today we will cover the Admin and Data Entry module, where government personnel update data and manage the portal settings. When an administrator sets you up as a user, you will get your username and your password sent to your email. After logging in, you will be directed to a homepage that outlines all the four portal modules. The first one is a data entry module, which directs you to all the data entry forms we'll cover in this training. The second module is an m and &E dashboard, which is a public portal that allows the public to access information that has been entered into the system. It also allows users to download data and provide access to the m and &E dashboards. The next module is a corruption risk dashboard which allows for real-time flagging of procurements based on a series of indicators to alert government officials to review these procurements and identify if there were any incidences of corruption. The next module is a data export, where users can download all the data in Excel for a particular department and fiscal year. I will take you through how to do this at the end of the training. At the top of the homepage, we have the header section. The header allows for quick access to data entry forms, which we will go into detail. The data entry forms are divided into two categories, procurement forms and the implementation forms. Let's have a look at the procurement forms, which include the procurement plan, the cabinet or ministerial papers, the project, tender process, tender document, tender quotation and evaluation, professional opinion, notification of award, acceptance of award, and the contract. The second category is the implementation forms, which include the administrator report, the inspection report, PMC report, m &E report, and the payment voucher. Now that we have an understanding of the homepage, we will move to the data entry module, which as you can see, um, the first stage of the data entry module is a status overview page. I will, I will discuss this page in two sections, which will be the left sidebar and the main structure of the page. In the left sidebar, we have the status overview, uh, which showcases the number of projects. For example, this the number of projects is two for the current financial year. If you would like to see the current financial year, you would go to the main section of the page and click the calendar and choose, for example, if you want to choose 2018, 2019. And you can see it changes the projects that are shown. So for the financial year 2018, 2019, we have 340 projects. Below the status overview section where we list the project numbers, we have the ministry or department plans where these are quick shortcuts that allows you to go to each uh, department page. So for example, if I want to see the gender, children, culture and social services page, I would go click on it and it will show you all the projects for that page. If we go back to the status overview page, we can see the main section of the status overview page highlights all the departments, the financial year and the number of projects. So for example, for roads, transport, energy, and public works, for the financial year of 2018-2019, we have 55 projects. Each department section is a collapsible bar, where if you click on the department name, it will show you the different projects under each uh, department. This section allows you to view the different status for uh, the different projects in the departments. Let us define the different status, which are outlined at the top. The first one is a draft, which is in blue. This status means a form is saved as draft to be updated later before being submitted for approval. The second one, which is a yellow, is a submitted, meaning the form has been completed and submitted for approval by users with the approval role. The next one is a red, which is a terminated which means the procurement process has been stopped at a particular point or in a particular form. The last one is a green, which means approved, 
meaning that the approver has reviewed and approved the form. Only approved projects are available on the public portal and will show in the dashboards. So how it is used? If we go back to um, the roads, transport, energy and public works, if you look at the first project, rehabilitation of Kwatuva, we have the first um, green icon, meaning that the project has been approved. If you look at the tender process, uh, we the green means that the tender process has been approved. And if you look at the award process, it means that the green, the green means that the award process forms have all been approved. And if you look at the implementation process, which is still in blue, means that the project, in all some implementation or all implementation forms are currently in draft. So just to highlight what the tender process, award process and implementation process means, the project pro process is a project name and the status of the project form. The tender process is ag the aggregation of the status of the purchase requisition forms, the tender document, the open and evaluation form and the professional opinion forms. The other process, which is award process, is an aggregation of the statuses of the award notification, acceptance and the contract forms. The implementation form also aggregates the status of the administration report, inspection report, PMC report, ME report and the payment voucher. Now that we have highlighted the status overview page, we can go into looking at how we can search in the status overview page, which is the search bar. And we can search, for example, uh, we can search for a word like Tuva, which was the project that we were just looking at. And if you click um, the search button, it will show you all the projects that have the name Tuva. So in the health services, we have CO2 Valley uh, dispensary in the water and sanitation. We have the Mutuva Sandam, and in the roads and transport, we have the project we were looking at and another project um, that's within the same department. We will now move into looking at a particular department, which we said you can go to that department by looking at the left sidebar and selecting the department you want. I will select the roads, transport, energy and public works department. The first step in any department page is to create a new procurement plan. We will do this by clicking the plus button. Once you click the add button, you will have two options, the create new procurement plan option or the import from Excel. We will start with the create new option, which is gives you the option to individually add the items in, in the procurement plan. The first step would be to click on add item, select the item from the item list in the system. This item list is pre-populated from the if me system. Click on the item, click on the unit of issue, click on the quantity and add the quantity, click the estimated amount of each and the system will automatically calculate the total cost. You will then select the procurement method, the account number, and the target group, which is youth, women, PWDs, city, citizen contractor, or margin of preference. We will choose youth for this case. Select the target group value and select the value across the different years. You will continue this process until you've added all the items in the procurement plan. Once completed, you will add an approved date when the procurement plan was approved. And you will upload the procurement document. If you would like to view the different comments and the different statuses of the form, you can click 
this toggle from no to yes and you'll be able to see the status change the comments which user added the comments or changed the status and the date of time this action was done currently we do not have any data because this is the first time we're setting up the form once complete you can save as draft save as draft means that you are still going to work on the form meaning that you have not submitted it to the next level of approval for it to be approved. If you are done with editing the form, you can save and submit, and this will be submitted to the next level of approval for approval. If you would like to close the form and come back and edit it later, you can do the same. For this instance, we will save and submit. Once you submit a form, the form, will, the, the form will be shown on the department homepage, as you can see, and you'll see the status as submitted as we have done. If you would like to edit the form, but you have already submitted it for approval, you can come and reject to draft. This can only be done if the approver has not yet approved the form. So once the form is submitted, the approver will come, click on edit, and now we'll be able to approve the form. Once the form is approved, you will be able to see the procurement plan name and the approved status next to the name. Once all the procurement forms are filled from purchase requisition to contracts and they have been approved, we can now add the implementation form. For the implementation forms, you can start in whichever order, and we will start with the administrator report. The implementation forms draw the data from the procurement plan, so it will highlight the department, the fiscal year, the tender title, and the contractor from the contract form. The first step would be to authorize payment, which will be a simple toggle that you toggle from no to yes. And you would have the report date, and upload the actual administrator report. Once complete, we will save and submit. We also have the inspection report, which also has a simple toggle for authorized payment, the report date, Add comments, which is a compulsory field. Upload the inspection report. And save and submit. If you noticed, uh, for the implementation form, we do not have a save and next feature between the forms because you can add the forms in any order. We will then move to the PMC report which allows you to save the different sub-counties and the different wards, which you can add multiple, and to choose the PMC member. Ensure to have added the PMC members in the metadata in the header before you add them here onto this form. So we will select a PMC member, the PMC designation, and the project closure handover the PMC status, which are three at risk, on track, off track, we will choose on track. Whether the PMC committee accepts and authorizes the payment. The report date. And upload the PMC report. We will go ahead and save and submit. We will have the m &E report, which is the longest of the reports. As you can see, the m &E reports also draw from the contract additional information, including the contract date, contract expiry date, and the revised budget. You would also choose the sub-counties of which the m &E report is reporting on, the S number, the LPO number, LPO amount, sorry, the LPO number, the actual expenditure, the 
uncommitted funds, the project scope, the output, the outcome, the project process. project progress, the target number of beneficiaries, and the way forward from the m and &E report. And the date this is supposed to be done. We also have other toggles for whether it's inspected or not, whether it's invoiced, and the officer responsible. We will also have the statuses, which is stalled, delayed, completed, not in use, complete in use, ongoing or not started. We will choose complete in use. You will then add your remarks and the name of the supplier of the contractor. You will lastly add the report date and upload. And save and submit. The last is a payment voucher. So for the payment voucher, you need to have added the PMC report, inspection report, and administrator report before you start this form because we reference uh, those reports in this form. So you can add the total amount that will be paid to the supplier. Reference the PMC report that you added. You can easily check which PMC report you're referencing through the date and the number and whether it was authorized or not. You can do the same for inspection report and you do the same for administrator report. Add the approval date. And if this is the last payment, check this. But because in this case, this is not our last payment, we would say no. And then you would upload the payment voucher. Once complete, you will save and submit. Just as the other forms, the validator will have to come and validate all these forms um, before they can be published onto the public portal. I would like to highlight that for all the forms, both procurement and implementation forms, under each form, for example, if we look at the purchase requisition form, you can see information on the form. For example, in purchase requisition, you can see the name uh, of the form, you can see the date, and you can see the amount in the form. In some instances, for example, the administrator report, you can see the name of the report, you can see the date and you can see the status, for example, if the administrator has report says authorized payment. Next, I will now show you how to export the data from the system. We can go back to our homepage. You can always go back to the homepage by clicking on the Government of Makwini County Open Contracting Portal. Click on our fourth module, the data export. Go to the particular department, for example, I will choose roads. Select the financial year. In this instance, I will select 2018-2019. And click data export. Your file will be saved on your computer. And you'll be able to see the department. You'll be able to see the plan items. You'll be able to see all the projects. You'll be able to see the cabinet papers, the tender process, and all the other forms that we've input in the system. And each column will highlight the different fields in each form. I also like to highlight uh, back to our header where you can edit the forms that we have put directly from the header. 
For example, if you wanted to edit the procurement plan, we would go to the procurement plan and you can filter by the status. So if you want to look at the submitted, if you would like to look at the submitted in the roads and transport department, which are none, and if you'd like to see the financial year. So if you would like to see the approved in the roads, transport, energy, and public works, and for the financial year, you can easily see that and you can click on edit and you'll be allowed to edit directly from this menu. On the header, we have two more options, which are the metadata that allows users to define some of the data structures that will be used in other forms. For example, a supplier list, where you can define the supplier names and the supplier code. This, this data is used in uh, quotation and evaluation and other forms to be able to uniquely identify the supplier. The other option is uh, your admin name, which for example, as we logged in, my username is Charlene, where you can um, update your username, um, first name, last name, email address, title, and your department. And you can also change your password by uh, changing the toggle from off to on and writing your new password and repeating that password. There you have it. We have come to the end of our training. You will now be able to log in, view data for your own department and other departments, add or update data, and now have an understanding of the different form status, which are the draft, submit and approved. And lastly, you can now be able to export the data. Thank you for listening.